For McFarlane's newest release, Diana Armors Up. Here's your look at the new McFarlane toys. This is the DC Multiverse Wonder Woman in her 1984 golden armor. In her golden armor, Wonder Woman is the ultimate embodiment of power, grace, wisdom, and wonder. An Amazon warrior whose strength defies, challenge, and whose courage shines. Before we get a closer look at Wonder Woman in her golden armor, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. These have now started to pop up in local retail stores. I know, I know. The U.S. already has had them for a while, but I can't always get them from the U.S. Of course, sourcing them out on places like eBay can get a little on the pricey side, so a lot of times I either have to wait for my local comic book stores to get them, or a lot of times I just have to wait for the local retail stores to stock them. To make a short story long. The figure of Wonder Woman in her golden armor stands quite impressively at 7.3 inches in height, and that in centimeters makes the figure 18.5 centimeters tall. Showing you a quick size comparison. Okay, it may not be so quick necessarily. Here is the other Wonder Woman that we had a look at. They're roughly about the same height to one another. Uh, you could argue the point that the Wonder Woman to the left is a little bit taller, but I think it's just simply because she's got poofier brown hair. Yeah, she's got brown hair. What's the, what's the deal with that? But they're roughly about the same height to one another. I can't help but feel the Wonder Woman with the gold armor has a slightly larger head, but we'll talk about that in a second. Again, decent looking sculpts on both of them. It's definitely one of the better Wonder Woman figures that we've seen in the market. Looking at the figure's accessories, we'll first have a look at the trading card. The trading card depicts Wonder Woman, of course, Diana Prince, with her golden armor. Also, she is wearing her hair out. Not a look you can, of course, pull off because the helmet isn't removable on this figure, but it kind of gives you an idea of the source material in which the suit is pulled from. And I'm really liking the design of this armor. Not sure how yet it plays out and why she simply wouldn't have used this armor for later films like Batman v Superman or Justice League, where the threat was so great. I'm sure the armor gets lost at the end of 84. She probably uses it and it gets destroyed or she only has it for a certain period of time. Time certainly will tell. Nonetheless, though, down below, we've got Wonder Woman 1984 Golden Armor. We flip it around to the back. The source will obviously be Wonder Woman from the 1984 film. They could have also pulled this from the comic roots, but because this, again, is a likeness to actress Gal Gadot, they would have pulled it from the 84 film. Real name is Princess Diana Them Themyscira, or Diana Prince, and then you got 5 foot 10, or 1.78 meters. Whenever I look up an actress online, or an actor online, to be specific, as how tall they are, am I the only one that generally gets frustrated when they say 1.7 meters, and then I have to quickly convert that, so I'm so used to seeing feet and inches. That's just my own, that's just my own side thing. But she does come included with the card. An overall nice-looking card, and just in case you're curious as to what the other card looked like, this was the one from the 84. Again, I like to hold on to these, put them in sleeves, and keep them away, keep them protected so nothing gets damaged in the process. She does also come with a display stand, which so happened to be the same stand that we got with Superman. It does have a neck that you can pull out, but it always seems stuck whenever I first put this in. You kind of have to just kind of push it a little bit. Hear that releasing snap and then this piece comes off. So if you do want to have just a standard stand, although to be fair, we just reach off camera again, we bring in the black one that came included with the regular Wonder Woman. Obviously the size is sm much smaller, and the all black, again here, is traded off for the clear. I wish in one way that they would have used all the same stand, but that being said as well, being the stand is elevated, maybe they couldn't have pulled that off with every single figure. Maybe you don't want to have every figure raised off of the shelf or wherever you end up having it. But I guess if you had at least kept it consistent, I mean, it's not, this is not something that's not a deal breaker for me. But again, I just kind of would have liked if the stands were consistent to one another. I, I know it's so trivial. You do have a peg hole on the top of the stand, which, which will attach the foot of Wonder Woman in her golden armor. And then again, if you want to just attach this, if you want to have in her flight pose, you basically just slide it into this open groove right there. See this? That slides into place. 
and you just lock that into place. That's that's really why it stays so securely is because it's got that lock and then you've got yourself a waist clip. Like the Superman, you can just take the figure of Wonder Woman and you just put it around her waist. I mean, you obviously can do it a little bit more dynamic than what this humbled review is currently doing right now, but you just close that around her waist and bingo bango, you've got Wonder Woman floating. It doesn't seem like it's so dramatic without the wings, unfortunately, but you get the idea. That's the way it attaches in place. So we'll just open this up, open up the shop for the day, and then release Wonder Woman. We'll put that to the side for the time being. And then we can address her wings. I don't suspect that the wings will play the whole role of this entire review because with any figure that has wings, sort of the problem that goes along wing with wings is they usually are attached with a peg. And you know the story, it's as old as, as old could be. Whenever you attach a peg into the back of a figure for the purpose of a wing, whenever you are then rotating wings, I'm always the one that finds these wings then pop out. It's again, a tale as, it's a tale as old as time. Isn't that Beauty and the Beast? Essentially what you're gonna do, see how it has a curve? Let me just see, see it's got a curve like this. Basically the concaved area, the curved area of the wing will be facing forward. Just plug that into place like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the other wing. And again, you just find that peg, there it is right there. And then that just fits into place like so. In a way it's good that the wings are removable so you don't run the risk of breaking the figure. But the problem is again, when you are attaching the wings, Sometimes they just don't stay in place. They stay fine now, but because there's posability to it, when you rotate the wing, a lot of times it butts up against itself, the other wing on the other side, and it then frees itself from that socket prison where it's been serving hard time. Again, you just plug that into place. It does also have a hinge, which is also good and effective, but again, you still have the same problem that when you attach it into the figure's back, moving the wing any bit which way, Again, it butts up against itself and then the wing pops right off. I would suggest if I can make a recommendation and take my recommendations with a grain of salt, I would decide which way you wanna have the wings first. So like say for example, you wanna have the wings out, I would hinge the joint out first and then I would go ahead and add the wing. Does that make sense? Does what I just say makes sense? And then again, if you wanna bring the wings forward, you may want to take the wings off, bring the hinge forward again, and just plug that into place, just like that. There is really no workaround to this. I mean, there's no easy way to pull off wings, short of, again, just completely mounting it to the back of the figure where you would never really be able to remove it. Personally, I like the freedom of being able to take the wings off if I wanted to, and it also does mean, too, that it does have some posability to it. Just, it's always again a problem with the wings always falling off. But nonetheless, it does look good and obviously finishes off the look rather nicely. Having Wonder Woman sporting these very large wings on the back of her, they're very nicely painted. Really, all the figure shares this spectacular me metallic gold. I mean, it's basically gold, gold, more gold, and more gold still, short of the gauntlets, of course, that are on her forearms and her hands, which are really not that much different than the standard Wonder Woman. All the rest of it is a brand new sculpt. I'm going to go ahead and take these off for the time being. Excuse me, please. Because I just know that whenever I'm going to be moving the figure, sure, sure enough, the wing is going to fall off. It also allows me also to be able to show you guys the back of the figure as well. But it doesn't seem to make much sense to really start at the back of the figure. We want to be starting at the front of the figure and primarily we want to be looking at the head sculpt. I like personally the head sculpt on this. I do think, let me just bring in the other Wonder Woman so you can see side to side. Again, they're good likenesses to Gal Gadot. I almost even say that the golden armor might be a little bit better. The only downside though to it is the head does appear very wide. It's not quite the same width. It's much wider than the Wonder Woman that we had looked at before. Now, if you do pull out whatever source material you can reference back to, I'm gonna go for the purpose of this and bring in the trading card. If you look at the trading card and you look at Gal Gadot's head sculpt here on the, the actual figure, it's pretty close. I have to admit, it's pretty close indeed. And it does look like she does have a wider head because she does have that eagle uh, helmet on the top there. I mean, it does look really, really good. Unfortunately, though, because that helmet is so close to her face and there's nothing that really divides the two, 
it ends up kind of making look like her face has been molded right into the helmet. In a way, I would have hoped that there could have been more of a divide, that they could have added a little bit of a darker shade right around here, so the helmet did look like it was a separate piece, even if you couldn't remove it. Again, if I bring in the armor here, the actual card of the armor, it is pretty close. I mean, the head goes right, or the helmet goes right to the edge of the head. Like, there is very little room to spare. But again, with this particular head sculpt, because it is plastic, and there's very there's going to be no movement to it at all. Again, if they just added a little bit of shade right here, right where my thumb, I'm sure, is blocking it right now, I think it would have just aided a bit so it didn't look like the face was just molded right to the helmet. The helmet is good if we just spin it around. She does have what seems very short hair, and I'm going to uh, avoid for the sake of just boring you guys with bringing the card in from time to time. Okay, we'll do it one more time. One more time, her hair is very long in the card. Now, that's not to say that her hair isn't tucked into the, the back of the helmet, so her hair really should be out here. But I'm wondering why the hair is so short on this figure. It could have also been the case where they kept the hair short so it wouldn't get in the way of the wings. And that makes a logical point, something I'm sure I just realized that now. For some reason on the underside, her hair is unfinished. I mean, I don't know what's really necessarily happened. It almost even looks like a big razor blade has cut that right off. I mean, it doesn't look like, it does look like it should have had a continuation of hair from that point on. And yet, for some reason, it almost looks like somebody has just very carelessly cut that hair off. Now, I would definitely have to go back and see images of it. I mean, this the figure was sealed. And yet, it did, again, it kind of looks like somebody literally just took a cutting knife and cut the bottom of the hair right off. Not even finishing off the rest of the paint that's on the underside. Now, I'm going to have a bit of a mystery on my hands. Despite the shortcomings of the hair, quite literally, the hair is at least a little bit more browner than the coloring that the 84 Wonder Woman actually sported. Again, I like the head sculpt. The gold is a nice touch. And the overall body execution, it does mimic nicely the armor that she has in the film. It's not maybe as shiny necessarily, but it does as close of a job as it can using the same metallic gold. Now, this section, this bottom area here, is a skirting armor. It's nice at least that McFarlane finishes off everything underneath that torso piece. So if you were to li lift up that torso, I don't know why you would would, but I'm just doing it for the sake of this review. You can see at least again, it's finished underneath. Also allows the figure to have some posability to it for, for it as well. The legs do result in having them look like they're a little not as wide, whereas in the film, the, the legs appear to be as wide as this section right here, but obviously that would limit what you could then do with the leg articulation, so that makes perfect sense there. Speaking a little bit of the leg articulation, one thing that does limit, unfortunately, the feet, you can still move them up and down, is that they have this, this front section of the armor that hangs down. It doesn't limit it as much as I thought it would, but it does it does restrict a little bit of the movement when you are deciding to rotate the feet back and forth. At least it's not as long as it probably could have been. At least they did a lot for a little bit of clearance, but still, again, it does limit a little bit what you can move with the leg. You almost feel like when you're rotating it, it's rubbing up against that little bit of plastic that's on the front. Of course, uh, like I said, the overall execution of the figure is pretty good. With the gold, it's a nice touch. Obviously, it's a case where the figure looks the best with the wings. And because we don't know what she's going to look like in the film yet with this armor, maybe the wings don't play always a role until she's ready to fly. Maybe she always wears the wings. Either way the case, I like the, at least the fact that you can remove the wings and take them off completely. That's a good point. But again, it's such a pain in the butt sometimes, the fact that when you are moving those wings, I know I talked about it to death, that the wings do pop off. Anyways, let's have a look at the figure's articulation. Her head rotates all the way around, it hinges up and down, and you can rock it back and forth. Strange again about that hair. Anyways, upper torso is a ball joint. The lower torso does have technically, well, it's all really the same articulation, but then the waist underneath that, so if I was to lift this up again, sorry, Wonder Woman, this whole section here actually has its own independent ball joint. It's a little harder to kind of get to because this piece is over top of it, but she does have the posability there as well. Legs split out quite considerably. I know I forgot the arms. We're going to go back to that in a second. You can move the leg forward and back. And because, again, this is soft plastic, it stays out of the way like that. She does have a double hinge on the knee. 
Uh, she does have that foot articulation up and down, a little bit limited when it moves up and down. And then she also does have toe articulation. That's always a nice touch. Yeah, yeah, I know, we forgot about the arms. The arms do hinge out. And like with the other McFarlane releases, she does also have that additional cup joint that's on the inside of her forearm. It does allow the shoulder to kind of crunch and move forward independently. And then she does also have a secondary ball joint. It's small enough, again, that it doesn't take away from the sculpting of the figure. It doesn't impede and make it look like an eyesore. So that's always a good touch. And I also like the fact that these shoulders, probably as you saw, they are independently attached to the rest of the torso by uh, a fair bit of plastic. At least it's not a very small, thin thread. But it's enough that at least when you are moving the arms out the shoulders stay completely out of the way. That's good. Swivel at the bicep. Uh, she does have a double hinge on the elbow. And then Wonder Woman, like the other figure, does have a rotation on the hand. You can hinge that back and forth. Not bad, again, looking Wonder Woman at all. Uh, likeness, I think, is good. Maybe a little bit too much in the rouge, but overall, it's well-executed figure. Don't know why the hair looks like it's been <laughs> chopped right off. I'm happy with this figure. I'm re really happy with how this one turned out. Be, of course, much happier when the film eventually does get released, pandemic and all. But uh, certainly, again, nice looking figure overall. The be beauty of, again, it is the fact that she does come included with the flight stand as well. You can go with or without, with or sans le display stand. Again, you just slide that completely off. Just attach the figure's feet to the, uh, to the, uh, the underside of the feet to the peg right there. And just wiggle that right on. Here we go. Um, one thing I do have to say, I don't even know if I had mentioned it with the Superman figure that we had a look at early on in these McFarlane uh, multiverse figures, is the fact that, I, again, I like the fact that these stands have removable necks. Not everybody is going to be inclined to display their Superman in a flight, po in a flight pose. Same way with the woman, Wonder Woman here in the golden armor. The idea of being able then to remove the neck is a nice touch. Because again, you can decide for yourself if you want to display the golden armor Wonder Woman in flight, or if you want to just have her standing straight. And that's a little bit boring, yes, but at least the stand allows you to do both, and that's not bad at all. Golden Armor Wonder Woman has a real shelf presence to her, not only because she does have the widespread wings, which are adjustable somewhat, but she's all decked out in this exquisite metallic gold. It does great job when you have the light reflecting off the areas. You really start seeing the amount of sculpting that McFarlane's team put into the piece. Yes, unfortunately, the wings fall into the same problem that most winged figures have. Because the wings are so close together, sure, they do have posability to them, but when you are moving the wings, one will tend to be butting up against the next, resulting in the wing falling off. At least because it's just simply pegged into place. Yes, it is frustrating. Yes, you will be doing it quite frequently. But again, it doesn't break the figure. You simply just reattach the wings and it's all said and done. Speaking of all said and done, it's really hard to pinpoint when it's all said and done how I'm going to display the figure. In a way, I like the displaying of having it in flight pose, but there's really a nice presence to it when it's simply just standing in place and the wings are spread out. So this is probably the way I'm going to have the figure displayed for the time being. The head sculpt, again, looks pretty close to actress Gal Gadot, though it does look a little swollen, I think resulting just simply because the helmet is so close to her face, and there's not nearly enough of a dividing line or shadow in place, so it looks like the helmet could have potentially been removed, even though we know that's not the case. And then let's talk a little bit about that hair. While the hair is a little bit closer to the movie Wonder Woman, we would imagine being a dark black hair as opposed to brunette. It's much better than the 84 Wonder Woman that we looked at before, but I'm still perplexed as to why the hair looks like it was cut right off. Not unless they had designed a whole bunch of them, realized that the hair was too close to the wings, and then basically literally had to go back, take every single head sculpt, and hack the bottom of the hair off. Because it does look like it was quickly cut right off, and not even finished and painted on the underside. If you have this figure for yourself, and I'm going to do a little bit of sleuthing, I think, after this video, let me know if your hair on the Wonder Woman, not your hair, but the hair on your golden armor Wonder Woman, has the same issues with the hair looking like it was cut off and then unfinished in paint. Like to hear your thoughts. Speaking of hearing your thoughts, weigh in your thoughts on what you guys think of the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Golden Armor Wonder Woman, which I might also add is available right now in retail stores. U.S. viewers will be saying yes, that's been the case for a 
while. Canadian viewers will be like, wait, it's out now? Ah, uh, yes, the big bit of the gap us Canadian collectors have to face when it comes to picking up the newest releases. Either way, though, today we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse. This is the Golden Armor Wonder Woman, a nice-looking figure. This one's going to be very presented right in the front of my display shelf, which I think I'm right now long overdue for updating and probably moving off some of those older figures that I've had on display in favor of some of the cool goodies that are out right now. If you guys are digging this guy's content, this content being my content... Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Fly yourself on over to the bell notification and hit that as well. And stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.